Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, an iOS 26.1 release to the public a week ago or so, and there's even more to talk about since the iOS 26.1 is out what's new video. Now unlike yesterday's video where we focused more on iOS 26.2, we have even more data and more information about iOS 26.1, and many have been asking if they should update. So we'll talk about everything from a couple app updates to some new features, as well as the overall experience. Not just my experience, but again your experience based off the YouTube community. Poll. We're at the time of this video on the post page, we have 34,000 votes and 387 comments. I've gone over all the old comments and all the new ones that have been added since, determined what the experience is like on 26.1 for most people, so again be sure to stick around toward the end of the video or I'll read some more of your comments as well. Now the first thing has to do with the App Store. There's a new app or a new updated app for Nintendo, and if we take a look, if you're a gamer, you can see if we go into the App Store here, we have a new Nintendo Store app. Now this has been updated with a couple new features that include things such as being able to browse games and review your play activity across different consoles. So that's something that's been updated. So if you haven't checked this out and you have maybe a Nintendo Switch or something like that, be sure to check it out for yourself and I'll link it in the description below. There's also a new Apple Watch Veterans Day challenge in the United States on November 11th. You'll see according to Mac Rumors, it says earn this award on November 11th by doing any workout for 11 minutes or more. Record your time with the workout app or any app that adds workouts to health. And you can see some of the rewards here. So that will be available in just a couple days. When it comes to new features, if we go over to the fitness app and then we go to the workout tab, I mentioned in the what's new video that you could add a custom workout. However, one thing I didn't realize is it adds it to your activity. So if we go to create a custom workout, select our type of workout, maybe scroll down here, just pick something, maybe pickleball for example, and then you have the duration, your start time, active calories, and your effort overall. If we tap check here or okay, it then adds it to your overall workouts and then adds it to your activity rings as well. This will sync on your activity rings or you can remove it if maybe you wanted to change it or change it to something else or update the data. So we can delete the workout and data and then it will resync the correct information. So that's something that's been updated. If we go into the clock app, if maybe you have an alarm set and that alarm is set to go off, the new slide to stop the alarm feature many people don't seem to like. There is a way to turn this off. So you can do that within your settings under accessibility. And then if we scroll down, you'll see touch, scroll to the bottom of touch, and you'll see it says prefer single touch actions. If you enable this and we go back to our alarms, within our alarm when it triggers, it will just be a press to stop again. And I can show you that. And now that the alarm is sounding, we can just tap to stop. So that's much better for some that don't like the slide to stop option. When it comes to bugs and bug fixes, I've been using iOS 26.1 full time with the public release on my iPhone Air. I also have it on the other devices here. I've been using it full time with my iPad Pro M5 13 inch, and it's also on the iPhone 11 and 17 Pro Max as well. So we'll take a look at the overall performance on the older devices. However, when it comes to bugs and bug fixes, well, it seems like they've fixed a few different things. There's increased stability and fluidity based off of most of the comments. Many say it's smooth and snappy. There are still some issues there we'll talk about in a moment. Most say that it's reduced heating and dimming on older phones, such as the 16 Pro Max. It's not dimming as quickly in bright sunlight when it gets hot, so that's great news. And also many people have said that car play issues have been resolved for most, not everyone, but most people. Also widget stacks have returned, so they've fixed that issue. So those things seem to be pretty consistent across many, many comments, but CarPlay still has a couple issues with people with GM vehicles or Honda cars having some connectivity issues, just not connecting at all. So if you are having that issue, I would recommend maybe going into your Bluetooth settings and then delete your vehicle and maybe repair the vehicle and see if that helps. Hopefully that fixes the issue. I haven't really experienced this at all. I've used it recently since the install. I've used it almost every single day with no issue. So it definitely is working well for some people, but there's still some that have some issues. However, the number one complaint is lag with the home screen or just page lag going to the widget page especially if you have more than one widget. It's more apparent on older devices as well. For example, on the iPhone 11, you can see there's just very slow swiping left to right. It looks like it's dropping some frames. Going page to page is okay, as you can see. But again, back to that widget page sometimes is very slow, even on the 17 Pro Max. There's some stutters throughout. There's also some issues if we go to the 
app library. Some people say it's not showing ProMotion at 120 hertz or it's not smooth. And it also seems that most still have that control center ghosting issue. So if we go into the control center again, if we swipe, it's laggy sometimes swiping page to page. But if we swipe off of this on a darker wallpaper, it will ghost and then just sort of pop out of the frame. So that's something that we're seeing over and over. Also, if we change our icons, maybe to tinted or clear, so we could change them to clear, you'll see they fill in like that. And if we go to the next page, they fill in. And some people are seeing this repeating itself anytime they unlock their phone. So let's try it out here. We'll unlock, swipe over, and it looks okay for now, but sometimes people are seeing it repeatedly refresh those icons for some reason. Also, RAM management isn't the best for some people. So if we go into YouTube, sometimes it will reload itself. And we're seeing that far too soon when we haven't opened additional applications. So if we go into the weather app here, Mercury weather, go into the camera, go back out. Let's go back into YouTube. It seems okay right now, but I have seen it reload from time to time. The other thing I saw on my iPad, I mentioned the other day where it automatically adjusted the brightness right before the video. Well, today it didn't do that, but instead I couldn't unlock my device. I'd unlock like this, try to swipe and it did nothing. So let's try that again. There we go. It worked that time, but the last time I couldn't even swipe up and it wouldn't do anything. I had to power the device down like this, turn it back on, or at least turn off the display rather, turn it back on, and then I could swipe up. So that was an odd error I hadn't seen before. And that's on the public version on an M5 iPad Pro. Now the big issue here has to do with the keyboard. I'm hearing this more and more that it seems the keyboard has not been fixed in iOS 26.1. The odd autocorrect issue is still there. And this seems to be an issue that I talked about a couple weeks ago, where a YouTuber discovered that sometimes when you're even pressing the correct key, it's actually pressing the key next to it, even though you press the correct key. So I could press maybe the letter H it shows it. And instead it selects Y or G. And this has to do with some predictive text. I would think it does not seem to be related to autocorrect, but you could say this is a new note. So that was correct. But sometimes it just looks like it has really poor autocorrect, but instead it's misselecting what it's interpreting. So hopefully they fix that soon. Also for some people, the overall keyboard just doesn't appear in apps or sometimes the keyboard overlaps in notifications, specifically in groups. Maybe you're pressing and holding from the home screen notifications. It just doesn't work. So that's definitely an issue for many people. Also many report that sometimes the noise or the sound is too soft and the haptic feedback is too soft specifically with the keyboard though. So some very odd issues there. When it comes to performance, I showed you that already as far as the swiping and sort of the lag here that still exists. So that definitely needs to be fixed. I think they'll fix it in a future software update and they seem to get it right with iOS 18. So I would expect they'll get it right with iOS 26, but for some reason it's here in this update for just about every phone, but sometimes it's super smooth, especially on the newer phones. When it comes to heat, well, heat is fairly well managed on the iPhone air. It seems to have reduced some. The iPhone 11 is as cold as it could be and the iPhone 17 pro max as well. But let's go ahead and run benchmarks since it's been another day. See what we get, see what the thermals are like again. I've run it a couple times already, but let's see what we get right now. And when it's about halfway complete, we'll take a look at the thermals on the iPhone air with 26.1. We're at about 40 degrees Celsius, 39.5 or so on the 17 pro max in the hottest point. We're at about 29 to 30 degrees Celsius overall. So pretty good. Definitely 10 degrees cooler than the other, which is significant, but it does have a vapor chamber. Let's give it a second to complete and we'll take a look at benchmarks. Benchmarks just completed and you can see on the iPhone 17 Pro Max, it has great scores at 3,928 for single core, 10,171 for multi-core. The iPhone Air is 3,666 for single core, 9,365 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history, you'll see it's about what you would expect. Sometimes it's a little better, sometimes it's a little worse, but it's well within the margin of error and definitely what you want from both of these devices. When it comes to battery life, let's go ahead and take a look. We'll go to battery, battery health. I'm at 100% capacity with 44 cycles. The other day I was at 42. I do have to charge this fairly often, but if we go down to battery usage yesterday, I had 56% usage of the battery, one hour and 50 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 31 minutes of screen idle time. The day before four hours and two minutes, and I used 99% of the battery also with quite a few things going on with music in the background and car play and things like that. So overall it's about four to five hours of screen on time, which is much better than the two to three hours I was getting with iOS 26.0.1. 
Now I went back through all the comments, compiled them together and 59% of you say that battery is better than iOS 26.0.1 or the previous version they were using. 10% say that battery is okay or fine. Only 31% say that battery is worse or draining quickly. And most that say battery was worse are on older phones, such as the iPhone 14 or older. Now, as far as what you had to say about the experience, let's take a look at some of your comments. Flow 4401 said iOS 26.1 is still very buggy on my iPhone 17 pro, but the battery got noticeably better. RD Vortex said running 26.1 on my 15 pro max, and it's finally good enough. Having been on iOS 26 since the first public beta 26.1 is actually the first time that iOS 26 doesn't feel like a beta version 26 and 26.0.1 were horrible due to various bugs like the keyboard covering the text field in apps. Mamed THN said, it's good now on my 16 Pro Max, iOS 26.1, but I also have the widget page to homepage swipe stutter. Battery is also good now, but not phenomenal. I get around 10 hours of screen on time. I used to get 12 to 13 hours on my 13 Pro Max, and I got around 11 hours of screen on time on iOS 18.7. I Dr. Ashwini said, iPhone 14 Pro Max, iOS 26.1. I've always loved the liquid glass theme, so that was never an issue. The real problems were lag, lock screen touch glitches, random silencing, battery drain, and app restarts, all of which iOS 26.1 has fixed. Performance is over 50% better, and battery life is far superior to iOS 26. Ryan Jordan, T7H says, been having loads of issues with gaming lag since upgrading to 26 and updating to 26.1. Have to restart my phone to temporarily fix the issue, but it always comes back. Hopefully Apple fixes it as it's getting very annoying. Anyone else having that problem? Travis Baker, 782 said, iPhone 15 Pro Max, I have much better battery life on point one. I've noticed the control center shadows when swiping it away. Also noted my apps are not changing from dark mode to light mode like they were in 26.0. Overall, not too bad on the 15 Pro Max. Like why Fanny I2143 said, there is lag when moving from the widget screen to the main screen. Very noticeable and annoying. ProMotion doesn't feel as fluid, and I dislike the toned down liquid glass features. Running tw iOS 26.1 on my iPhone 15 Pro. If we go to settings, go down to general and then iPhone storage, and we'll scroll down, and this is just so you can compare, but iOS is taking up 20.28 gigabytes for me. Apple intelligence is 6.62 gigabytes where the iOS update itself is 13.66. Now, when you install an update, it overwrites everything. It's not taking up additional storage typically and overall system data is currently at 17.16 gigabytes. And this typically can vary up and down as it's cache data. And I really wouldn't worry about it, but just wanted to share that. Now, as far as iOS 26.1, it's a step forward in a critical bug fix that successfully helps the severe battery drain and overheating issues that's plagued the initial release of iOS 26 versions. This has led many users, especially those on the Pro Max models, to report great or amazing battery life now that the update's out. However, this update definitely failed to address the most visually jarring and widespread flaws we have. There's persistent UI stuttering and lag, like I mentioned, and when navigating the home screen or the widget view, it's just gotten to the point where it's annoying. And as a result, the update still needs some improvement. And this really needs to be brought up to the levels we expect from Apple. So hopefully they do that very, very soon. So that's everything with iOS 26.1. Hopefully that gives you more of an in-depth look than we had the other day. And let me know if you like the more in-depth look. This isn't something I typically would plan on doing normally, but I covered more about 26.2 before, and this is more about iOS 26.1. So hopefully that helps you decide if you want to update if you haven't already. But again, let me know your experience in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.